show with Zoom. Shout out to Free Free TV. You're listening to Sleeping Time. <laughs> I'm Cheryl, singer songwriter. I'm Kerry on the keys. And I'm Zizi, I play drum. We got started in college and it was October 2010, so it's coming up to a year now. And we started just the three of us, didn't we? Yeah, it was kind of like um, each each like group kind of split off, each band split off, and we were like the last the last sort of people that didn't really have a band so uh, we just thought like we were friends already so we just thought we'd get together and see see what we could make out of it and here we are now. Um, our influences are people like, well artists like Submotion Orchestra and Little Dragon, just like cool, chill or downbeat kind of vibe. Uh, me personally, lately I've been listening to Andrea Chirano, I like her cool vibe, so she's kind of jazzy as well. Yeah, yeah like my influence is actually quite strange to all this pop artist Lady Gaga, and I saw her acoustic versions of songs and I thought, yeah, that's amazing, I'm going to try that. And like, I listened to like Little Dragon and stuff like that as well, and some motion orchestra, and um, I sort of like just got the influence to start playing the keys and now I put my own jazz and stuff into it through the influences around me and everything just goes into it so that's my influences. Uh, with me I listen, I listen to like dubstep which is kind of it's, it's a complete contrast to how I play because uh, like I like playing hip hop sort of fusion beats and like kind of getting a bit more broken down with the drums rather than like playing sort of dubstep but yeah, I'd say, I'd say the most inspiration is sort of hip hop and funk, sort of drumming and jazz as well, obviously, to go with the band. The highlights of our career have got to be from when we start, when we started, and we all just come from a really diverse, diverse area, and everybody who watched, especially in college, and um, playing the final gig at college, like they 
all change their the the perception of us, of course, and how we they portrayed us and how we performed was a completely different thing. And I think that we we didn't show them what we're made of, as in a sense, we just showed them that we just that we're them. real music. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that was a big highlight of our career, like and at the bass fest as yeah. well. Nice festival. <laughs> yeah. We did a big ghost post. Yeah, supporting. We that was massive. And, and uh, we've got we've got another one um, October the fourteenth at the O2 Academy in Birmingham. We're supporting uh, an upcoming band called Submotion Orchestra. Uh, yeah. They're doing a UK tour, and we we've got the opportunity to support, support them. them. It's mental. Oh, we yeah. actually yeah. listen to them as well, so that's very a really big, big highlight. Um, yeah, very big influence. Cool. Uh, in, in the future, we'd, we'd like to work with like a small orchestra just to build our sound. Like um, we've we thought about just having like say a few sections of the orchestra just to kind of add more textures to the music and to make it a bit more unique. Create more new sounds so you can take the trips. Also, like a lot of artists nowadays don't tend to use like old-fashioned instruments either, and. But that's a cool thing, like the classical vibe can also give it a proper urban vibe, but if you can change it up and totally make it urban, so that would be cool. It's like bringing classical into what we do, and it yeah, kind of course. infusing the two, the two genres to make something better. Because our genre is weird. instruments differently. Yeah, yeah. Use them in a different way. Personally, my viewpoints on the Birmingham music scene at the moment is it's very specific and put into genres and a lot of it's commercial and it's Indian rock and if it's not Indian rock it's very urban and very grimy and there's no mixtures anymore like there's, a, there's a, no one tending to mix the music and bring it all together and see what happens in that category do you know what I mean so my personal view on the music is that scene is that they need to like open up their minds and listen out to everything and find different genres and put that into their music and make it better and improve it. And to stop sitting so comfortably as well. I feel like people are just comfortable in, say, if like doing pop music, in, like instead of doing something else that they'd want to do, but they don't actually do it because they're not comfortable or they're worried about what people think, things mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I play in a rock band and like, it's, it's weird because they tend to get like a lot more gigs around the city because it's rock influenced or whatever, but I don't know. Like, um, with with live acts, it is more rock, and then with DJs, it's it's more like dubstep, drum and bass, and there's nothing there's nothing in between that. It's just one or the other. You don't yeah, you don't yeah. tend to get a lot of uh, gigs that have like alternative music or new like new sounding music. So it's I think that's a lot to do with the venues as well. Though, like a lot of the venues in Birmingham make it harder for artists yeah, to yeah, and promoters to, as well. Yeah, as well. promoters. They tend to put on rock nights or urban nights or grime nights or dubstep nights and drumstep yeah, nights, yeah. you know what I mean? And it makes it difficult for people who aren't in them genres to feel where they can go. The UK music scene now, it depends on which side you go of it because like the commercial side, everyone's tending to do the same thing and like that makes it that makes people who are on like aspiring artists feel as if they've got to do a certain be a certain way to get into the charts. But then if you look at the underground and like the urban side of it, like and things like that, like there's a lot of great musicians out there and undiscovered talent because of the sheer fact that they're not commercial or they're not being seen because they're not they haven't got the look or whatever. So I think that that's a problem in the UK music scene at the minute. I don't I don't think it's so much a problem. I think. Like I think it's good to have to have the divide because like w with commercial music and chart music and things like that, I think it should be kept to to one side. Like if if, if it's bigger or whatever, it's it's there. Do you know what I mean? It's it's always going to be there. But it's good to have the underground sort of music because it it kind of keeps it like exclusive and it keeps it like uh, yeah, p only a certain amount of people know about it and it's it it makes it like more exciting to listen to as well because you think oh hold on well. Not, not many people know about this tune or it's just it's, it's different sort of music it's not like mainstream so but I feel as if like if it's good music it should be mainstream regardless whether it's commercial or not 
That's just how it's going to be. You know what I mean? Because whether it's commercial or not, like if you look at like artists like Adele, she she's she's a commercial artist, but she's not a commercial singer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? She isn't a commercial artist as such. She just went mainstream because she's got real music. And the thing is, is that there's a lot of artists like Adele out there. There's a lot of artists like that. Like, do you know what I mean? As for like a lot of these these artists that are coming on the scene doing all the same thing, mm. and like people like Jedward who are just doing silliness and getting entertainment points and yeah. hits, other than musical hits. That that splits the music scene, doesn't it, from the music scene to the entertainment scene. So yeah. the real UK music scene should be real music. But you. I feel like if you like that type of music, you'll find it anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And then, I don't know, they'll get their exposure from yeah. all the underground people. Like people like James Blake, like he's totally yeah. different, isn't he? Like, and I don't know, people have discovered him, and because he's so different, the majority of people actually like him, and he's getting all this exposure. Like because he's so cool and so different, and people can relate to his funky, weird sound, like. But I think yeah. it's growing as well, like artists like James Blake and mm. uh, just people like that. It's, and it's, Ed mm, and Jake Williams. So it's, it's, all, it's all sort of growing anyway, and it's, it's getting bigger and bigger. Which I think that smaller artists and like smaller companies and like niche labels and stuff like that are getting more exposure now as well, because people are getting bored of the commercial music scene. It's, 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 it's all the same, so like, I think people are want to listen to different music at the minute as well. advice that I'd give to any aspiring artist is just to be yourself and don't be scared and even when you are scared just do it anyway because even then you can just be proud of yourself also to work hard as well because if you've got talent and you don't do anything with it and you don't work hard you just it's just wasted talent I think you know just to work hard and yeah I think if you yourself. if you're trying to actually like make something of it as well make it your, your first priority like you can't you can't just sit around and think, oh yeah, I'll, I'll do like practice once a week. So it's got to be every day. You've got you've got to put hundred percent to get as much Rusty as you can. Even out more, like, and you've got to take yeah. risks as well. Like take yeah. risks and and also keep an eye out for every aspiring artist. I'll say like be careful of the snakes because people try and use your talent and people will lie to you and tell you that t and tell you what you want to hear and then not actually follow through with their with what they're saying. So you've got to be aware of that. That's a main point from, from there. That's pretty much it. And love what you do too. Yeah, L keep, keep you the do. talent, man. And Enjoy also it. study it as well. And make it better. Criticise yourself. We've recently signed a, a artist development contract with Punch Records and Aspire for You. We won that through a competition that happened in the map which was called Base Talent. And we were the proud winners. And we also, that's how we got the base talent gig as well, the base fest gig. Um, they're helping us with all our artist development. They're pushing us forward, making us do everything that we need to do, like our EP, photo shoots, videos, um, interviews, things like that. And they've also got us the talent 2011 gig, which is in New Brindley Hall, which is in Hockley. And you can check it out on projecttalent.co.uk. Uh, also, we're supporting Submotion Orchestra in October, and that's at O2 Academy. So, contact us if you want any tickets. Yeah. It's going to be a good show. I'm very excited. <laughs> All the details will be below. <laughs> Free, free TV. Bullet, bullet. <laughs>